Assalamualaikum semua. Uh, saya Aisyah Amin dan insyaAllah hari ini akan berkongsi tentang tajuk pathology of gastric ulcer. Semoga anda semua mendapat manfaat daripada perkongsian ini dan enjoy. Okay. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hari ini insyaAllah kita akan belajar topik pathology of peptic ulcer. So dalam lecture ni, uh, there are three things that korang kena tahu. Firstly is about acute gastritis, uh, chronic gastritis and also pasal peptic ulcer itself. Okay. So, first kali kita pergi kepada acute gastritis. Okay. So, acute gastritis, uh, firstly kena tahu pasal definition. So, definition of acute gastritis is the transient in mucosal inflammatory process that may be asymptomatic. So, transient dekat sini means fast. So, the mucosal inflammatory process is fast and the patient may be asymptomatic. Asymptomatic means the patient may be tak ada symptoms pun tapi ada acute gastritis. Alright. So, first, uh, next kita pergi dekat causes. Apa yang menyebabkan acute gastritis is firstly the usage of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So, dalam case of acute gastritis, it is particularly about aspirin. So, aspirin ni dulu kita dah pernah belajar. Aspirin will inhibit the COX enzyme tu lah. So, uh, COX enzyme ni will um, lead to decrease of bicarbonate secretion. So, that will cause acute gastritis. So, next is excessive alcohol intake, heavy smoking, uh, treatment with chemotherapy and hypovolemia. Hypovolemia ni is the decrease of blood volume. So, bila blood volume decrease, uh, at the same time, will decrease the bicarbonate secretion. So, bicarbonate ni, lepas ni kita akan belajar, bicarbonate is one of the defensive factors of the gastric mucosa. So, bila tak ada bicarbonate, um, kita punya gastric mucosa will... Um, Imposed to duodenal ulcers or gastric ulcers. Okay, next is ischemia and shock. Severe stress. Stress ni macam uh, burns ke, post infarction ke, surgery ke, uh, macam tu lah. And then uremia and anterogastric reflux where is uh, bila ada bile acid reflux. Okay, alright. Next, kita pergi dekat symptoms of acute gastritis. Symptoms of acute gastritis, the patient may develop epigastric pain, nausea or vomiting. Tapi kalau in severe cases, ada mucosal erosion. Mucosal erosion ni, take note, kalau dalam acute gastritis, mucosal erosion ni only affect the subepithelial tissue. So, kita tengok dekat gambar ni. Gambar ni. Okay, mucosal erosion ni hanya dekat subepithelial tissue. So, or the superficial region. Kita tengok kalau layer lain, it's still normal. So, only the affection is at the superficial part. Okay. Alright. Next is uh, ulceration, hemorrhage, uh, hematemesis. Hematemesis ni especially in alcoholics and melina and massive blood loss ni is the most severe form. Massive blood loss. Okay. Alright. Habis dekat acute gastritis. Tiga. Okay, so kita teruskan dengan chronic gastritis. So, chronic gastritis ni, firstly, the definition is increased number of lymphocytes and plasma cells or what we call the inflammatory cells dekat gastric mucosa. So, this is the histological definition, alright? Okay, so chronic gastritis ni, apa bezanya dengan uh, acute gastritis tadi is that the symptoms. The symptoms is more less severe and more persistent. So, kiranya symptoms dia um, tak teruk tapi selalu berlaku. Tapi symptom dia uh, is the same, nausea, apa abdominal discomfort. Tapi take note, kalau in chronic gastritis, hematemesis is uncommon, unlike acute tadi. So, uh, causes chronic gastritis, kita ada tiga. Helicobacter pylori, autoimmune dengan primary causes of chronic gastritis. So, firstly, helicobacter pylori, korang kena tahu helicobacter pylori ni is a gram-negative bacilli. And uh, helicobacter pylori ni uh, present dekat 70 to 90% cases yang orang yang ada gastric or duodenal ulcers. So, helicobacter pylori ni, tengok gambar ni. Helicobacter pylori ni is yang the black deposition dekat gastric mucosa. So, gastric, uh, helicobacter pylori ni, kenapa kita kata dia dangerous? Kita kena tengok dekat mechanisms of helicobacter pylori. So, helicobacter pylori ni apa dia buat is dia akan induce intense inflammatory and immune response, enhance the gastric acid secretion and also uh, dia ada secretion of bacterial products. Bacterial products yang uh, di secreted by helicobacter pylori ada tiga, urease, protease dengan lipases and apa bacterial products ni buat, ia, dia akan induce epithelial injury. Okay, so that is about helicobacter pylori dan dia, dia akan cause type B chronic gastritis. Alright. So next is the autoimmune type is which is the type A. Autoimmune type ni the, uh, what happen is that body kita akan develop autoantibodies towards parietal cells. So kita tahu parietal cells ni dia 
secret HCL dengan intrinsic factor kan so bila ada autoantibodies towards these cells so dia akan ada decrease in acid dengan decrease in intrinsic factor okay the third cause is what we call the primary causes of chronic gastritis is stress caffeine alcohol and tobacco sama je dengan acute gastritis tadi Alright, so the types of chronic gastritis uh, based on the causes tadi ada type A dengan type B. So, kita refer dekat uh, this table. Okay, so uh, kita kena tahu to differentiate both types. So, kita ada type B dengan type A. Type B is the helicobacter pylori associated. Type A is the autoimmune uh, type. So, kalau helicobacter pylori ni selalunya um, happens dekat antrum the antrum of the stomach and type A happens dekat body and then uh, there are the differences dekat uh, inflammatory cells kalau type B, the inflammatory cells is neutrophils and plasma cells tapi kalau type A, it's only lymphocytes dengan macrophage alright, moving on to acid production kalau type A, they will decrease acid production sebab tadi kan dah di, ada autoantibodies towards parietal cells kan. So, kiranya decrease in acid production but then kalau dekat type B will increase or slightly decrease. Okay, gastrin dekat type B will be normal ataupun slightly decrease but then in type A is increased. Okay, other lesions. Other lesions means uh, what is associated with the um, lesion. Kalau dekat type B ada inflammatory polyps, dekat type A ada hyperplasia. Okay. And then um, terus pergi dekat uh, sequelae. Sequelae means uh, the complication. Kalau type B, type B may be complicated with peptic ulcer ataupun adenocarcinoma. Tapi kalau type A, complicated with atrophy, um, pernicious anemia, carnicious, carcinoid tumor. Okay, alright. So uh, the risk factors of type B, uh, it's either low socioeconomic status ataupun uh, living in rural areas. Kiranya um, bila hygiene tu tak uh, dia tak kisah pasal hygiene lah Kiranya more infected by the helicobacter pylori okay. Tapi kalau autoimmune uh, It develops bila orang tu memang ada autoimmune disease Contohnya diabetes mellitus or Graves disease okay. Alright So uh, habis tentang chronic gastritis Okay so kita move on to our third objective That is the peptic ulcer Okay so peptic ulcer ni can occur at any part of the GIT As long as that part is exposed to the action of acidic gastric juice So kita tengok dekat gambar ni Mana parts yang exposed to the acidic gastric juice kan So kita ada yang exposed is the lower end of the esophagus The whole part of the stomach And lastly the first part of the duodenum So semua parts ni uh, boleh happen peptic ulcer Okay, so moving on to the pathogenesis of peptic ulcer. Okay, so in the normal physiologic state, body kita or the specifically uh, gastric mucosa kita ada two forces yang acting uh, dekat dia lah. Kita ada defensive forces dengan damaging forces. So in normal physiologic state, defensive forces dengan damaging forces ni is in balance. Okay, so defensive forces ni contoh dia uh, firstly the mucus secretion and the bicarbonate secretion. So, kiranya mucin and bicarbonate. Mucin and bicarbonate ni secreted by surface epithelial cells and apa dia buat is that dia akan create a pH gradient yang dekat dia punya lumen is acid tapi dekat dia punya surface dia is neutral. Okay, next is the mucosal blood flow. Mucosal blood flow ni related to the resistance. So, contohlah kalau ada happensnya uh, ischemia. So, ischemia dia akan decreases the mucosal blood flow, betul tak? So, bila decreases mucosal blood flow, resistance pun decrease. Okay, and then uh, apical surface membrane. So, uh, kita punya gastric mucosa ni, apical surface membrane kita ni specialize that dia akan resist acid diffusion. Kiranya dia tak bagi acid nak diffuse towards gastric mucosa. Okay, next is the uh, prostaglandin. Kalau prostaglandin uh, yang spesifik untuk gastric mucosa kita is the prostaglandin E series. Okay, apa yang prostaglandin dia buat is that dia ada cytoprotective effect uh, which is dia boleh uh, increase the bicarbonate secretion, the gastric mucus production, the mucosa blood flow and also the rate of mucosa regeneration. Okay, yang itu in the normal physiologic state. Okay, tapi kalau happensnya injury uh, contohnya ada uh, helicobacter pylori infection, uh, cigarettes or alcohol intake ke, ischemia ke, shock ke This will induce increased damage or impaired de uh, defenses So bila ada increase in damage or impaired defenses uh, of our body Yang tu akan induce peptic ulceration Alright, okay So this is another image yang korang boleh tengok Okay So normally body kita ada uh, 
balance between hostile factors and protective factors. So that will lead to healthy mucosa. Tapi kalau uh, in injury, uh, what happens is that hostile factors kita ni akan bertambahkan. Ada helicobacter pylori, um, ada pepsin, ada gastric acid secretion. So that will induce peptic ulcer formation. Alright. So that is all about pathogenesis dia. Next kita kena belajar pasal uh, morphology of peptic ulcer itself. Okay, kita pergi ke morphology of peptic ulcer. So, um, orang korang kena tahu 4 points dekat peptic ulcer ni is first the margin, uh, edge, floor dengan the base. So, margin ni bila kita tengok um, ulcer ni daripada atas. So, this is the top view. Uh, so, this is all the margin. Okay, next is the floor bila kita tengok daripada inside. So, dalam ni semua ni is the floor. Okay, next is the edge, edge is the sides. So, this is the edge and this is the edge. Okay, and then the last one is the base bila kita tengok daripada belakang. Alright, okay. That is um, untuk morphological view yang secara amnya. And then, so this is the true uh, morphology of the peptic ulcer. So, apa yang kita boleh nampak is the margin. Margin of the peptic ulcer is usually flush. Uh, flush ni contoh dia macam mm, congested lah, uh, red in areas kan. So, the floor pula is smooth and then uh, korang kena tengok dia punya uh, mucosa fluid, mucosa folds around the peptic ulcer radiate outwards. Tu yang kalau korang boleh nampak dia macam uh, the folds is outwards. Dia punya direction of folds is outward, outwards. And then another thing is the base. Uh, base dia uh, thick and firm sebab ada fibrosis. Okay. Uh, another characteristic about the peptic ulcer is it is usually solitary. Solitary means usually single. And then round to over. Kalau dalam kes ni, it is round in shape. And dia punya size uh, range dia is from 1 cm sampai 5 cm. Okay. Uh, that is all about the um, peptic ulcer as a whole. But then korang kena tahu dia punya um, morphological view daripada base dia. So ni, this is our, these are the layers of the base of the peptic ulcer. So uh, the first layer, the first layer is the surface of necrotic layer. Second, le bawah surface of necrotic layer is the acutely inflamed layer, number two. And number three ni, yang ni semua is the zone of granulation tissue. And Number four is the extensive fibrosis and then fibrosis ni uh, sometimes boleh uh, extend ke muscle wall. And then uh, the last layer or the deeper layer is the epithelium and the epithelium tu selalunya ada regenerative hyperplasia. Okay. Habis dekat morphology of peptic ulcer. Okay. Uh, last point of this lecture is uh, korang kena tahu the difference of gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer. Okay, so kalau gastric ulcer, uh, taking from the name gastric, so occurs in the stomach, duodenal, duodenal, so occurs in the duodenum. Okay, uh, gastric ulcer, uh, the epigastric pain, 1 to 2 hours after eating, but then kalau duodenal ulcer, 2 to 5 hours after eating. So, gastric ulcer punya pain develops earlier than duodenal ulcer punya epigastric pain. Okay, and then gastric ulcer can cause hematemesis or melina. Hematemesis means vomiting of blood. And melina means uh, black stool sebab uh, digested blood kan. And then uh, kalau duodenal ulcer, it's uh, associated with melina ataupun hematochezia. Hematochezia, uh, difference from melina is that hematochezia is uh, what we call bleeding per rectum. Kiranya masa dia, uh, the feces is with blood. Okay. And then uh, gastric ulcer is associated with heartburn, chest discomfort and early satiety. But then kalau duodenal ulcer, uh, heartburn dengan chest discomfort is uh, uncommon. And gastric ulcer complicated with gastric carcinoma. And duodenal ulcer, kita ada one characteristic what we call nocturnal, nocturnal pain. So pain, pain may awaken patient during the night. Okay. Uh, itu sahaja daripada saya. Terima kasih semua dan jangan lupa subscribe Media Channel Z dan sekiranya terdapat sebarang uh, penambahan info ataupun uh, salah silap daripada pihak saya, uh, sila komen di bawah. Terima kasih.